We enter into this world once and we leave once. Has it ever occurred to you that when we come into the world, we come by ourselves and when we leave, we leave alone, like we leave by ourselves, like we have to walk that uh, road by ourselves. What are my thoughts when I think about this time, when we have to leave this world? Do you stay with me to find out. Hello everyone, my name is Dear Kola. Welcome back to this side of life. If you are new here, welcome. And thank you all for joining me today. On this side of life, we, sh we, we explore and share life lessons, faith and finances to help us live our best life as we grow older. If you would like to learn from other people's successes and mistakes, and you would like to leverage these experiences and life lessons for yourself, then be sure to uh, like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Let us know what you think, and also uh, hit the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. Today's video is going to be a little bit reflective reflecting and my aim is not to make us you know sad or feel bad but I just think that these are some of the things that we do need to talk about over this past two years with this pandemic it has been challenging for a lot of people there are many people that have you know lost their lives and there are many dear ones that we have lost and this has set me thinking about the end of life what and how should we address end of life issues? And what are my thoughts about this? And I know we don't like talking about these things. It's not comfortable, but I think we, we do need to talk about it so that we can uh, be prepared and so that we can, you know, address it the way that it ought to be addressed. So today we are going to talk about these issues and what we ought to do. Let us dive into the video. The first thing I want to talk about is that absolutely everybody, every single human being is going to experience end of life, you know, either sooner or later. It is Benjamin Franklin who said, and I quote, but in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except for death and taxes. So should we be sad or scared about end of life? Absolutely not. End of life is a passage to glory and to a better place. Rather, we should be aware and be prepared for that time after we have lived a full life and have fulfilled our purpose here, that it is now time to go to rest. So we should not be like those who live, you know, nonchalant lives, you know, lives of, oh, let us eat and drink and tomorrow we die. But we should be people who number our days so that we can apply our heart to wisdom. Secondly, what manner of people ought we to be knowing that you know, we are going to experience that end of life. It was Maya Angelou also who said that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. So when we think about what manner of men we ought to be, I think about being people of impact. The time that we are spending in this world, the time that we have in this world, we should spend it to impact other people. We should, we should spend it such that people will remember how we made them to feel. We should not think about ourselves alone. We should not be selfish. We should think about other people, our community, our world. What can we do to leave this place, this world, better than how we met it? I think that is the kind of people we ought to be. 
I will refer to these four dear people that I have lost over the past year as my very dear friend. My dear friend was very passionate, a very passionate Christian who loved the Lord with all her heart. And she was passionate about young people. She wanted to impact them so that they can impact their world. She wanted to uh, pour into them, you know, the wisdom that she had so that they can live, you know, a good life that will impact their generation. She impacted so many young people, including my own children. And then there was my dear senior friend. My senior friend was full of wisdom. Today, we still remember his words of wisdom. For example, he would say that, you know, you cannot judge a match from halftime because it's still halftime. We haven't gotten to the end of the match yet. That was my dear friend. He was also a lover of God. And then I had a dear colleague who was very, very dear to all of us that worked together. He would make us laugh. And we still remember his jokes. And then finally, a dear pastor who was very warm and very full of faith, very warm and welcoming. He, he was friendly with everybody. He, he, he made everybody feel welcome, whether you were black, white, a child, an old person. He also went to be with the Lord. The third thing I want to talk about is, ma is materialism. Yes, all the houses and cars and clothing and shoes and jewelry and all the other things that people amass in this world. What would they mean when, when we are gone? Like when we are no longer here? You know, Yoruba people would say, any cool man. That means when you are gone, you don't know what happens after you are gone. And the Bible also talks about people who amass wealth to leave to people uh, behind them who they don't even know how they are going to treat that wealth. They don't know what they are going to do with it. So am I saying that you should not get wealth? No, I am not saying you should not get wealth. The Bible talks about how God is the one who gives us power to get wealth. So yes, we should get wealth. But the most important thing is, what are we doing with that wealth? What are we doing with all the houses, all the money that we have? How are we impacting our world with those things that, we, that have been given unto us? That is the question that we need to ask ourselves, you know, as we march on in this world. Should we plan for retirement? or plan our estate, or plan to leave something for our children. Absolutely, we should. As wise men and women, we should think about leaving a legacy behind for our children. We should write our will. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a topic for another day. But yes, we should write our will. What do you want to happen after you are gone? But... The most important thing is to lay up treasures in heaven. The Bible talks about how laying up treasures in heaven where moth do not come in and corrupt and thieves do not uh, break in and steal. That is the more important treasure to lay up than laying up treasures in this world. So as we are planning and laying up our treasures here, let us also think about laying up treasures in heaven. My dear friend did not just talk about her passions. She did not just, you know, talk about her, her desire to have the youth impact their world for good. But she did something about it. Like she started an organization that uh, mentors youth and, you know, has a... Uh, seminars and webinars for them to teach them you know 
the lessons of life and how they can impact their generation. So also, how can you impact your world? What can you do? Even in your family, in your community, in your city, in your town, in your country, in your, in your world. What can you do to make a difference in the lives of other people around you? To impact them for good so that they will remember how you made them feel when you are no longer here. Let us think about that. And if you are getting value from this video, do please like, uh, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when I post uh, new videos. I would really appreciate you sharing this video with other people who you think might benefit from it. Okay, the next thing is giving. Giving is very important. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And we all know that the borrower is always a servant to the lender. So it is always better to lend and better to give than to receive and better to lend than to borrow. And also God loves a cheerful giver. So God is always happy with us when we give. And you don't have to, it's not just money that you can give. You can give your time, you can give your talent, you can give your advice. You know, there's a whole lot of ways that we can give. Some people will say, oh, I don't have anything. But everybody has something that they can give to other people to make an impact on them. So let us learn to give out of what we have and even give sacrificially even if we don't have. Because giving blesses us because it is more blessed to give than to receive. And finally, I want to end on a, on a happy note. And I want to say rejoice because every day is a gift. You know, as we think about end of life, every day is a gift. Every time, every day we wake up, every day we have another opportunity to be able to impact our world for good, for God. It is a gift. And so we should rejoice. We should rejoice and be glad in the Lord for the day that the Lord has made. And we should look out for ways by which and opportunities by which we can impact our world and do something for good and do something for God. You know, every day that we live, every day that we live is a gift from God. And we should rejoice in it and do our best, you know, to impact our world as we, you know, grow older and we uh, uh, get closer to that time when we will uh, depart this world. I hope you have learned one a thing or two from this short uh, video, even as I have learned uh, making it. So I just want to encourage you again that you should share this video with other people, subscribe, like and comment. Uh, and also uh, hit the notification bell so you know when I upload new videos. So have a happy and healthy uh, week and go out and make it the best day of your life. Bye.